Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Keep It Small, AAV and LNP Quant and Sizing from Just Microliters. I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Unchained Labs. To learn more, visit them at unchainedlabs.com. Now we encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you might have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd now like to welcome our speaker, Nellis Dennis, a product manager at Unchained Labs. Nellis, you may now begin your presentation. Welcome, sir. Thank you for that introduction. Let's get right to it with my talk, Keep It Small, AV and LNP Quant and Sizing from Just Microliters. Bigger is not always better. Like in this case for Fido, who had big dreams but is now a bit stuck here and isn't going to fit through. The same applies for your gene therapy vectors. Lipid nanoparticles need to be just the right size to deliver messenger RNA effectively while checking size and watching out for aggregation is essential for viral vectors like AAV and lentivirus. Meet Stunner, the ultimate gene therapy tool. Stunner is the only system that pulls together UVVIS concentration, dynamic light scattering, and static light scattering data from just the same two microliter sample. This means Stunner can dig into AAVs, LNPs, and lentivirus samples for all kinds of info, such as nucleic acid quant, sizing, and even AAV titers. Stunner combines UVVIS for concentration and DLS for sizing. SLS intensity data is also read during a DLS experiment. So low volume, high throughput DLS to get the size and PDI data you need while quantifying DNA or RNA concentration. All this is done in a 96-well plate-based format that powers high-throughput analysis, giving you all this data on 96 samples in one hour. Now, how does Stunner do this? Simply add in two microliters into the input well, and it's pulled into the microfluidic reservoir. At this step, the sample can sit for up to two hours before reading, with no evaporation. After the plate is loaded into the instrument, the circuit is read first when empty, and that will remove any absorbance contribution from the plastic. And then a pump applies a small vacuum, which moves the sample into the microcuvettes to be read. Because the circuit has fixed path lengths, it can make very precise and accurate reads. Now, let's take a look at our applications. First, our completely new RNA LNP application. Without the need for dilutions, reagents, standards, or fluorescent dyes, you'll get size, polydispersity index, total RNA quant, and quantification of turbidity. LNP size is critical to the performance of a successful drug. Throw a stick in the literature and you'll hit a paper with LNP size data, often showing the link between size and the effective dose needed. So when you've got lots of buffers, formulations, and RNA constructs to test, you want to be gathering size data on everything. Stunner's DLS gives you the high throughput power to gather the size and size distribution data on 96 samples in less than an hour. Here we're looking at intensity distribution data for a whole plate of LMPs with the average diameter noted as the value below each distribution. You no longer have to be limited by DLS data that has to be manually gathered for about a dozen pieces of data in a day. Now DLS can keep up with LMP samples as fast as you can make them. On the left, you can see an intensity distribution. The mRNA LNP is tested here had an average hydrodynamic diameter of 79 nanometers plus or minus 1%, which is visualized by the green bar plot on your right, and its error bar. Inside that bar plot, you can see the PDI value as a blue dot with error bars, showing a PDI of 0.14 plus or minus 0.02. 
and the DLS data is just how you like it, with intensity and mass distribution, hydrodynamic di diameter, and PDI values that you've been using for years. But now you can add the throughput that lets you get a really great understanding of the error bars and distribution you have in your sample. You don't need to stick to an N of 1 for your DLS data. You can run actual triplicates, quadruplicates, you name it. OK, time to switch gears to UVVIS. Anytime you try to see through solutions this cloudy, absorbance measurements done with plain vanilla instrumentation will have some issues to overcome. But Stunner lets you see through the fog. Load up an LMP sample into a Stunner sample well, and you'll quickly see it being whipped into the serpentine reservoir and held there. This is shown on the left. To read the plate, Stunner will pump the sample into the 0.1 and 0.7 millimeter path length micro cuvettes for UVVIS absorbance measurements. When reading LMPs, the combinations of Stunner's two fixed path length micro cuvettes provides precision and broad dynamic range. Since LMPs are typically very turbid, cloudy samples, the short path lengths are needed so that light to pass through and enable absorbance measurements. Here's a quantitative look at all that turbidity, shown by comparing the signal from an empty LMP, so one that is not loaded with a nucleic acid, to a PBS buffer. These LMPs create a whole lot of signal that looks like absorbance, but usually isn't helpful and just gets in the way. Because all that turbidity makes quantifying with traditional UVVIS almost impossible, total RNA quant by UVVIS is normally a big challenge. For example, if we squint at the full curve, we can see the RNA bump at about 260 nanometers, but the difference is pretty small. To analyze this, we have to separate out the signal from the turbidity, from the signal from the LNP absorbance due to RNA and other LNP components. On the left, we have that raw data again, and on the right, Stunner has used our unmixed algorithms to isolate the impact of turbidity and remove it. This is shown by the black line indicating total signal, and the gray line indicates the contribution from turbidity. The remainder is in green and blue. Green is the isolated signal from RNA, and that will be our total RNA concentration. And blue is the UVVIS absorbing signal from other components in our sample, UV absorbing lipids, excipients, and buffer components. Stunner separates the contributions of those three groups, turbidity, RNA, and other components to quantify total RNA concentration in less than a minute per sample from two microliters and without any dyes, reagents, or complicated workflow. Stunner's RNA concentrations agree closely with the total on messenger RNA concentration determined by ribogreen. On the left is a standard measurement with N equals 7, and comparing that to total RNA concentration determined with ribogreen. You can see they closely agree. A two-fold dilution series of firefly luciferase messenger RNA LMPs showed highly linear results down to 1.2 micrograms per milliliter. Error bars are plus or minus one standard deviation. And Stunner gets you everything all at once. Not only DLS results on 96 samples of LMPs in about an hour, but at the same time you get your RNA concentration all from that same two microliter sample. We already mentioned turbidity quantification. Where turbidity is normally a massive problem for a lot of UVVIS instruments, Stunner is able to understand turbidity and analyze it to tell you a bit more information what is going on with your particle. Here we are looking at turbidity signal from a two times dilution series of empty LMPs. You can see that a sample gets diluted every step the turbidity also decreases. And it turns out that decrease is very linear. What we are doing here is taking a sample of empty or full LMPs, gray or green, and we measured that particle target. Then we've taken that two times dilution series and quantified it on Stunner. When Stunner quantifies turbidity, it is going to represent that as absorbance value at 260. 
if you plot those values against each other, you see that when you dilute these samples, you get a very linear plot. Since turbidity scales with concentration, size, and payload, you can build a standard curve with, against particle count and use standard turbidity quantification to get a quick result on your particle count. Okay, so now let's take a look at our second application, AAV quant. When characterizing AAV, you have a lot of things going on. It's important to know how much protein is present, how much DNA is present, if things are intact, if they're the right size, and if there's any aggregation. It's a truly complex biologic that demands a lot from characterization techniques. Stunner brings it all together to deliver answers on capsid titer, empty fill ratio, and aggregation with, again, only two microliter of sample in less than a minute. And there's no labels, no reagents, or any standards. You just use the sample you've got. So let's focus in on two technologies, DLS and Uvivis. Each of them tells a part of the story. DLS gets you info on capsid titer and aggregation, but can't say anything about what's happening with DNA. On the other hand, Uvivis gets you total amounts of protein, DNA, and can link those to empty fill ratios, but it doesn't give you info about if any of this is actually contained in capsids. So each technique gets you valuable info, but neither tells you everything. So what if you could combine them to get a whole story? And that is exactly what Stunner does, and it's shown step by step here. First, the LS identifies the capsids, the aggregates, and how intense the signal is from each of those populations. In the middle, that info then helps you split up your SLS signal from a total into a, the amount just attributable to empty and full capsids combined. And finally, Uvivis brings in that info about empty full ratio plus protein and DNA totals to provide the last piece of the puzzle. Here's the whole story told in one graph, starting with the left side blue bar, which is a protein in a sample. UVVIS got you the total amount of protein, and here we're expressing it as how many possible capsids all that protein could make. By adding in DLS and SLS info, Stunner splits up that information into the light blue bar, which is aggregates and extra protein junk, and the dark blue bar, which is the total titer for the AAV capsids. On the right-hand side, in the green bar, the process follows the same steps for DNA. The total height of the green bar is the total amount of DNA expressed as the total number of viral genomes that you can make. Light green is extra DNA, and dark green is the number of full AAV capsids. Dividing dark green, so our full capsids, by dark blue, so our total capsids, gets you to a percent full number that we also convert into an empty full ratio for you. Now here's that same data showing how Stunner helps you know your AAV inside out. Dark green divided by dark blue is percent full, and this is shown here in yellow. Purple is percent empty, which is just remainder. Empty full ratio is percent empty divided by empty, uh, empty full ratio is percent empty divided by percent full. So here purple divided by yellow. And if your preferred term is CP per VG ratio, that will be just the inverse of our percent full number. To look more into our ability to see percent full values, we took stocks of empty and full AAV9 and mixed them at different ratios. For each combination, 100% full stock, 80% full stock, and so on, Stunner gets a good read on the data and percent full and percent empty align well with our expected values. And this application works for any serotype. Just tell Stunner the basics about what serotype you have and what its DNA payload is, and Stunner takes care of the rest of the heavy calculating. Now, for getting capsid tighter, Stunner is way faster and requires less upfront work than ELISA's. Here we've taken full or empty AAV9 and run a dilution series where we've compared Stunner's total capsid tighter metric against the results for a capsid ELISA. The results have slopes close to one and R squared values above 0.99. And importantly, 
it would take hours to get this ELISA data, while Stenner has done it in less than an hour with no sample prep. Assessing AAV storage conditions is a slow process, made even slower when the only analytical tools you have are functional assays. Storage experiments are made more complicated because some AAV stereotypes are more prone to aggregation than others. Functional assays might tell you that you have lost infectious particles, but won't tell you why. Stunner's DLS shows if a sample has aggregated, so you can tell when a sample of AAV has gone bad without wasting time on cell-based assays. Stunner's DLS intensity distributions of AAV2 and AAV9, both stored at 4 degrees for two weeks, showed AAV2 had peaks at much larger hydrodynamic diameters than AAV9 indicating significant aggregation. The large light blue bar of the AAV2 samples shows the extent of storage-induced aggregation, while the dark blue and green bars dominating the graph for AAV9 show that most of the sample is intact, full capsids. Quickly rejecting samples you know won't work in a cell-based assay saves you time and means you can focus on the samples you know will work. Choosing the right buffer in formulation studies of AAV vectors is absolutely necessary, especially when it comes to pH. If the tools you use to characterize your AAV are too slow or take too much sample, you might miss out on the optimal buffer. Heating full AAV9 to 45 degrees for 25 minutes in a neutral pH 7 buffer caused some aggregation, but heating it in an acidic pH 4 buffer caused nearly complete aggregation. With its lightning fast DLS reads, Stunner makes it easy to evaluate more buffers in stress conditions than traditional methods while also providing you with tighter results. And if iodixanol is part of your process, it is useful to know exactly how much is in your sample and to check on the iodixanol concentration after each buffer exchange. Stunner can help out here as well and will detect iodixanol in your sample as low as 0.0005% by volume. So from only two microliters, Stunner combines UVVIS, DLS, and SLS data to tell the whole story about your AAV sample delivering mountains of data about sample aggregation, AAV full and empty capsid titer, and empty full ratios. Now, while we have specific applications for RNA LNPs and adeno-associated viruses, Stunner will help you with other drug delivery systems as well. Here we can see measurements of a lentiviral vector at different steps in the process. The crude sample has some small impurities and large impurities or aggregation. Choosing ultracentrifugation as next step shows a nice and monodispersed lentiviral vector. Now, when the same crude sample goes through tangential flow filtration, diofiltration, and concentration steps, a lot more impurities and big aggregates are shown, showing up for this specific sample. Stunner gives you size and aggregation so you can check any step of your flow for buffer impurities and aggregation to identify the best formulations and clean up steps. And UVVIS can help you as well. Here are the absorbance results at 280 are shown in combination with the Z average diameter. Stunner allows you to find the perfect concentration without inducing aggregation and quickly compare between sample types, processes, and batches. We offer IQOQ services and Stunner software is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant with full audit trail and electronic signature capabilities to help you achieve full integrity on your experiments and reports. And Stunner has shocking accuracy and wants to prove it. Using the fundamental strip defense standards, the accuracy, precision, and linearity of the instrument can be proven at any time, at the protein-relevant 280 nanometer wavelength, NOD ranged from 20 to 225. Be confident about every sample with data that leaves no room for doubt. 
and the features don't stop there. If you would like to move Stunner downstream, we also have a performance certification. These tests with certified cuvettes meet the United States Pharmacopeia and European Pharmacopeia guidelines for UVVIS spectrometers. The tests and all necessary calculations are handled automatically by the software. In addition to the capabilities we've discussed so far, Stunner also meets the needs of labs working in larger scales. For these high throughput needs, the plates used for Stunner are compatible with liquid handling robots. The system can be fully integrated with our API setup, so the robot does all the work for you, from loading the sample to setting up the experiment to loading the plate in the system, starting the measurement, and finally exporting the results in your limbs. On top of that, you can use plate tracking with barcodes, ensuring traceability. And so that is how Stunner delivers label-free, standard-free, and hassle-free gene therapy quant to the world of RNA LNPs and viral vectors. Stunner helps you characterize your viral vectors and lipid nanoparticles, so your end product is a perfect fit. Now I'll take any questions. And thank you so much, Nellis, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you want to ask, please do so now. Just click on that Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's take a look. We already have some great questions coming in from our audience. Now, it's our first question. Can you run LNP samples containing ethanol on this? Yeah, the short answer there is yes. Um, we, we successfully run LNP samples with ethanol con concentrations up to 25%. Um, the moment you go beyond that concentration, it would be a test on the sample itself, but yes. Thank you so much. And can this also be used for gamma retrovirus? We don't have a specific application for that as with the AAVs, but that's um, a bit the same how you would do it with the lentivirus shown, which is a gamma retrovirus. So you can use Stunner to quickly get your DLS results and, and get an absorbance measurement, and that way compare different processes or batches um, on aggregation, on size, and if you, if you look at your absorbance, you can um, take conclusions there as well. But we don't have a specific application for those. Thank you so much, Nellis. And one audience member wants to know, do the virus need eluded in certain formulation in order to be read by the stunner? And can the viral supernatins, which may have other proteins from the producer cells, be read by the instrument accurately? OK, so um, to the first part, no, we don't need to um, elude it in a, in a special buffer or anything like that. But for the most accurate results uh, for the AAV quant, it was definitely meant for downstream, so most pure samples where no other proteins would be in your sample. Now, if, if you would have that problem or you're a bit more upstream and you still want to want to check out with Stunner, you can, of course, do, do so and, and check your different purification steps to see if that other protein um, goes away the moment you start purifying. And so look at your purification step if it's really working as good as you wanted it. Thank you so much. And I want to thank our audience members for these great questions coming in. Now, can the analysis distinguish between pH 6, 7, and 8? So our, our system won't distinguish between any pHs. It's uh, The experiment shown there was um, showing how you can uh, use your different types of buffer and check for um, differences in aggregation, for example. So you will know what the what your buffer conditions are, and then you'll look at the results and, and take your conclusions for there, seeing that pH six, for example, would have a lot more aggregation than pH seven, that will make you conclude that pH seven is the better buffer to go with. Wonderful, and we have time 
for several more questions. So keep sending them in. In terms of abundance, now Liz, how do you, how do the DLS aggregate peaks translate into actual aggregate concentrations? So we don't actually give you aggregate concentrations. We give you the titers of, of your perfect capsid. And so um, we get a titer from the SLS, DLS, and UVVIS part. And for UVVIS, we get a total amount as well. And so the aggregates, we don't translate into actual concentrations, but it's just um, to distinguish the difference between those uh, values from those two techniques. Thank you so much. This next question is a little bit of a scenario from an audience member. Say I scan multiple AAV serotypes to find the best one for my insert. Can I measure them all on the same plate? Yes, that's one of the great features from Stunner where you can put um, your samples in different sample groups. And so on the same plate, you can have different blanks, but also different serotypes uh, there. And so it would be no problem to run them on, on the exact same plate. You can still mark which uh, sample group is which analyte. And what sample prep do I need to do? That's another great feature of Stunner. There's, in most cases, no sample prep at all. So you just take two microliters, you load it, and you run it, and you can walk away while it's doing the concentration and DLS measurement. Thank you so much. And we have time for one more question. Now, is can you run one sample at a time? And if so, how long does that take? Uh, yes, you can, so you can um, set up your experiment with as many samples as you want. We have. So the plate can be one to 96 samples, and you can actually even specify multiple plates uh, there. So yes, you can run one sample at a time. Uh, it will take a couple of seconds for the UVVIS measurement, and then your DLS, we take a four times five second acquisition and as default. So that would be under a minute per sample. Thank you. And it looks like our audience members are sending some more questions in, so we have time for a couple more wonderful I'm working with a custom AAV, not a default serotype. Will that still work? Yes. So um, in our analyte section, you can we have preset default serotypes for AAVs. Um, but when you're working with a custom one, you can you can make changes to which viral proteins you used, uh, things like that, um, to change the refractive index and all those things to make sure your end uh, calculations are completely correct for your, or, or as good as possible for your specific sample. And now is, is the stunner compatible with LIMS system? Yes, so um, we, in a, in a standalone or in automation, uh, you can get output in multiple formats. Um, CSV is, is the most popular one, and that can go directly in your LIMS system. So that's no problem at all. Thank you so much. And there is a specific software for AAV. Is there one for LV? So we don't have a specific application for uh, lentivirus, no. We have um, our general applications, as uh, was shown in the presentation, where we do um, just sizing and um, concentration measurements. And so you, there you will still get aggregation results, but there's no specific translation into titers or anything like that for antivirus. Now, Nelvis, have you compared your AAV genome leaders with qPCR results? Yes, we have. But um, I would say, first of all, the qPCR will give you the identity. And so it's very specific for the DNA uh, you want there. And we will give you the total uh, DNA concentration. So there will be. Uh, in most cases, we will be slightly higher than qPCR. Um, but in general, it's a different technique. So um, there will be some, it, it in general correlates nicely, but there will, it won't be exactly the same. Thank you, Nellis. And we have time for one final question. For AAV, does viral genome size affect final leader? Yes. Um, the genome size is definitely important. That will have an influence on uh, the calculations from um, the absorbance to your actual uh, DNA titer. 
and also um, in the Molitor way for the uh, calculations from SLS, DLS, and UVVIS to tighter. So it, it is definitely important, um, but our software allows you to enter your um, genome size in either if you have one overall always the same size, you can do it once in your analyte, or you can just with an Excel template, if you have 96 different ones, for example, you can just import and the software will do all the rest of the calculations for you. Thank you so much, Nellis, for your presentation and for your time today. Would you like to offer our audience members any closing remarks before we go? I would say thank you for everyone that joined in today and um, never hesitate to reach out to us if you're interested to learn more about our, project, our product. And I want to thank you again, Nellis, for your time and for your important research. And I'd also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Unchained Labs, for underwriting today's educational webcast. And before we go, I want to thank our audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker <clears throat> via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. And this webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.